I'm going to unhide the effectors for a moment and I'm going to access the effectors of the wrist. So it's going to have to be this one here. And this one here. So if I press enter, I should have should both be effectors. Let me just double check here. I'm going to go into the objects mode so there's a right arm effector. If I hit F again I have the left arm effector. So I'm good to go. I'm going to remove them from the chain effectors group and press enter and I'm going to give their icon a shadow instead of the primary display. So I'm going to say none and I'm going to turn this one into uh, a box and I'm going to increase the height in YZ. So let's go 2020. 20. There we go. So just a nice end effector control that I can use for, for managing the IK of the character if I want to. But I also have the ability to work the rotational controls as well. Uh, the reason I'm able to do this is using the FKIK blend uh, property to blend between keyframes set on the end effector's position or posi uh, rotational keyframes on the bone's local rotation. We need an up vector though because like the legs we don't have the ability to control the directions of the elbow. We actually get a flip right there you can actually see. So again an up vector is the answer and I'm not going to use the up vector that I prefer for the legs. I'm going to use the more traditional up vector that I showed you initially for the legs. Uh, the one that uses the local Y axis. So for that I'm going to get two more implicits. I'll uh, grab a cube size it down, be a little bit bigger. I'll move it up into position and just mirror it across there. And I'll line up the position and rotation of the what will be the control object to the first bone in the chain, keeping in mind that the chain roots are hidden right now. So there is the first bone in the chain. This is the only bone that uh, a chain up vector will work for. It will not work for a second or third bone in the chain. It would work for this palm bone here. It doesn't need it however because the palm bone is the first bone in its chain. Anyways, uh, I'm going to match up the position, match up the rotation, do the same thing over here. And move them back along their local y-axis. These ones seem to be opposed so I'm just going to move them back manually. I suppose I could also even just mirror this one because if I were to move this one back eventually it would match up. So I could have saved myself a little bit of work there. Uh, it's always good to know. Uh, I'll set the chain up vector now. Constrain chain up vector. Pick the control object and do the same thing on the other side. And I usually try and keep the, the up vectors about uh, a bone length uh, behind the, the chain root, kind of about the length of the bicep bone. These control pull vectors, I usually like to have them as children of the chain roots, so I'm going to unhide the chain roots group and make each of these roots the parent, just so when the character moves the up vector doesn't get left behind and if the character's arm rotates it makes more sense to have the chain up vector parented to the object it's controlling. Unless you want an offset effect, uh, which is entirely likely. Do the same thing here. Pick a child. Notice I haven't really named anything yet. I'm about to start doing that. So our names for constraints are just right leg constraint and left leg constraint. So we'll call this one knee direction constraint. Let's find that. That's knee direction constraint on the right side. This one is the left 
elbow constraint. And the right elbow constraint. So another layer of control for our character. So I again need to save uh, an action. So I need to think about what the keyable parameters of these objects are here. And essentially they just need to move. Um, rotating them does nothing and scaling does nothing. But if I want them to ever revert back to this initial uh, orientation, um, just for uniformity, um, I could store its entire um, SRT. So if I go into its keyable parameters editor, just store its position, rotation, and scale so I can always get back to it. So once again, I don't need the chain effectors visible because I've taken what I needed from it, the uh, chain effectors at the wrist. I'm just going to make them a little larger. And I'll store another action. So I can clean up a few things before I do that. Uh, namely, at the foot here, the parent object, I usually add parent objects. So this is actually the right knee direction parent null. And this is the left. I'll usually put them into an unselectables group or start a group that I just call hidden. You know, that I just don't move those objects. So let's do that. Let's start a hidden group. I've got the two objects picked. And we'll start a hidden group. I'll make sure if I close up the Malcor model that hidden group is a part of it. And I'll just set the visibility attribute of hidden to hidden by hitting H. So I'm a bit cleaner there and I'll also take the chain roots and hide them. Alright, so store another action. And from now on I'm going to just store the pose and call it rest pose and just overwrite the uh, the rest pose file. So these names just get a little bit too much after a while. Uh, I can always offload the pose if I need to, uh, to get back to a pre-existing version. So I'll just go into store keyable parameters, current values, and I'm just going to call it the rest pose. I could call it Melkor rest pose, but it's attached to the model, so uh, it's sort of moot to do so. And I'm just going to customize this button by right-clicking and choosing customize button, and I'm just going to call up an apply action for rest pose rather than a specific base constraints or pre-envelope rest pose. So now when I try the arms, we pop right back to our bind pose, which is awesome. So we'll move on and add another couple layers of constraints to the character and also some controls to switch between different behaviors we might want.